Greetings, friends. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Sean, your host. This morning we will be doing our uh, prophets and gospel portion for the week. Uh, we did the Torah portion yesterday. I kind of like this order a little bit better, uh, doing the Torah portion first, um, because I feel like I have to explain the portion twice if I don't, and it just seems to make more sense. And so we did our Torah portion yesterday, which was Genesis chapter 28, uh, verse 10 through chapter 32, verses 2, dealing with Jacob and his life and uh, how he came to uh, end up meeting his wife Rachel and him working for his and working for Laban and uh, all that, and then fleeing Laban, and that was the story of that. Uh, today, we're, our prophets portion is uh, Hosea chapter. 12 verses 12, um, chapter, yes, chapter 12, starting with verse 12, uh, going to chapter 14 through verse 10, and this deals with the history, uh, kind of like this rebellion uh, with Israel, and then when we get to chapter 14, uh, we see God, after, he is, after he's like poured out this judgment upon Israel, now he's pleading for them to repent with the assurance that if they would just repent, that he would heal their backsliding and that his mercy would be upon them. And that can definitely be a message for us today. And so that's what we're going to be looking at. And then, of course, we have our gospel portion, which is really short, and that is uh, going to be John chapter 1, verses 41 through 51. So only 10 verses. Okay, that's a mouthful. All right. Uh, let's get started, starting with Hosea chapter 12, verse 12. I will be using the King James Bible this morning. Let's begin. And Jacob fled into the country of Syria. And Israel served for a wife, and for a wife he kept sheep. And by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet was he preserved. Ephraim provoked him to anger most bitterly. Therefore shall he leave his blood upon him, and his repro reproach shall his Lord return unto him. Chapter 13 When Ephraim spake trembling, he exalted himself in Israel, but when he offended in Baal, he died. And now they sin more and more, and have made them molten images of their silver and idols according to their own understanding. All of it the work of the craftsmen. They saved them... Let the men that sacrifice kiss the calves. Therefore, they shall be as the morning cloud, and as the early dew that passes away, and the chaff that is driven with the whirlwind out of the floor, and as the smoke out of the chimney. Yet I am the Lord thy God, from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt know no God but me, for there is no Savior besides me. I did know thee in the wilderness, and in the land of great drought, According to their pasture, so were they filled. They were filled, and their heart was exalted. Therefore have they forgotten me. Therefore I will be unto them as a lion, as a leopard by the way will I observe them. I will meet them as a bear that is bereaved of her whelps, and I will rend the cow of their heart. And there will I devour them like a lion. The wild beast shall tear them. O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thine help. I will be thy king, where is any other that may save thee in all the cities? And thy judge of whom thou sayest, give me a king and prince? I gave thee a king in mine anger and took him away in my wrath. The iniquity of Ephraim is bound up, his sin is hid. The sorrows of a travailing woman shall come upon him. He is an unwise son, for he should not stay long in the place of the breaking forth of children. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, will I redeem them from death? O death, will thy plagues, O grave, will I be thy destruction? Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. Though he be fruitful among his brethren, an east wind shall come, the wind of the Lord shall come upon, shall come up from the wilderness, 
and his spring shall become dry, and his fountain shall be dried up. He shall spoil the treasures of all pleasant vessels. Samaria shall become desolate, for she hath rebelled against her God. They shall fall by the sword, their infants shall be dashed in pieces, and the women with child shall be ripped up. All right, before we move to chapter 14, chapter 13 is just this image of God's wrath coming upon Israel, coming upon his people. And why? It's because they've, they've, they've left God. They've, again, they've went to idol worship. And he says, because they have done this, they're going to be like a cloud. They're going to be like dew. They're going to be like smoke coming out of a chimney that just evaporates. It just passes away. He says, I knew thee in the wilderness, in the land of the great drought, according to their pasture. So were they filled, they were filled, and their heart was exalted. Therefore have they forgotten me. Sometimes with great blessing, great prosperity, we get too comfortable. We forget our desperate need for God. We get prideful. And we fall. I'm thinking of America today. I'm thinking of Israel today. Not the political land of Israel. But Israel meaning the, the branch with the, the tree with the branches shooting off of it. Made of Gentiles and Jews who have believed in Mashiach. That's what the scriptures say who Israel is today. God's people today. And of course, we're scattered all over the earth. But there's a lot here in the United States of America, or at least there used to be. And maybe our prosperity has been a curse as much as a blessing because we've gotten too comfortable and we tend to feed the flesh when we shouldn't. We tend to walk in the flesh instead of the spirit, even those of us who have good intentions. We need to be careful because God is watching and he is, he's saying, look, I did all this for you. But now you've been exalted and you have forgotten me. Therefore, I will be unto them as a lion. As a leopard, by the way, will I observe them. I will meet them as a bear that is bereaved of her whelps. And I will rend the call of their heart, and there will I devour them like a lion. The wild beast shall tear them. He's saying, judgment is coming. I've had enough. And then the judgment pronounced on Samaria. Samaria shall become desolate, for she hath rebelled against her God. And what is the cost for this rebellion? He goes on to say, they shall fall by the sword. In other words, by war, by violence. Their infants shall be dashed in pieces. Their women with child shall be ripped up. Very serious. Very serious. But there's hope. If we would just return to the Lord, there is hope. The very first verse in the next chapter. So it ends with, Samaria shall become desolate, for she hath rebelled against her God. They shall fall by the sword. Their infants shall be dashed in pieces, and their women with child shall be ripped up. O Israel, O Yisrael, return unto the Lord thy God, for thou hast fallen by thy iniquity, by thy lawlessness, by thy transgressions, you have fallen. Return unto Yehovah Elohaika, is what it actually says, or Yehovah Elohaika. We talked about that the other day. This name of God that we miss because when we when we read the English translations, all we see is the Lord thy God, but it's really Yehovah Elohaika. Return. Return to Jehovah. Return to your God. For thou hast fallen by thy iniquity. Let's finish the last eight verses here. Take with you words and turn to the Lord. 
Say unto him, Take away all iniquity and receive us graciously, so we will render the calves of our lips. As sure shall not save us, we will not ride upon horses, neither will we say any more to the work of our hands, Ye are gods, for in thee the fatherless findeth mercy. So here we have, if you return, God will take away this iniquity. He will receive you graciously. Just stop saying, just stop idolizing the work of your hands. And if that happens, the fatherless will find mercy. Verse 4, I will heal their backsliding. Love that line. I will hear, heal their backsliding. I will love them freely, for my anger is turned away from him. Some of us may need God to heal our backsliding today. Maybe we've fallen back into a, an old sin, an old filthy habit. Maybe we're struggling with faith. Maybe we haven't been walking the way we know we should. I mean, we should just cry out to God or get on our faces and say, Have mercy on me, Lord. And return back to God. And he says, I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely, for mine anger is turned away from him. He is a gracious and merciful God. Verse 5, I will be as the dew unto Israel. He shall grow as the lily and cast forth his roots, says Lebanon. His branches shall spread, and his beauty shall be as the olive tree, and his smell as Lebanon. They that dwell under his shadow shall return. They shall receive as the corn and grow as the vine. The scent thereof shall be as the wine of Lebanon. Verse 8. Ephraim shall say, What have I to do any more with idols? I have heard him and observed him. I am like a green fir tree. For me this is my fruit. For me is thy fruit found. Who is wise, and who shall understand these things? Prudent, and shall know them. For the ways of the Lord are right, and the just shall walk in them, but the transgressor shall fall therein. Let's read that last verse one more time. Verse 9. Who is wise, and shall understand these things? Prudent, and shall know them. For the ways of the Lord are right, and the just shall walk in them. But the transgressors shall fall therein. May we be a people that walk in the ways of God, that walk in the ways of Yehovah. The just shall walk in them, but the transgressors shall fall therein. Well, that is the prophet portion study for this morning. But we're not quite done yet. Let's do our quick look at our gospel portion for today, which is John chapter 1, verses 41 through 50. And I'm going to turn there quickly. And it uh, looks like it's the gospel of John. And let's see what our gospel portion has for us this morning. Just got to get there here. All right. Chapter 1, starting with verse 41. Ten verses. Here's what it says. He first findeth his own brother, Simeon, and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. You know, I find that interesting. They find the Messiah who is being interpreted to Christ. Now, I'm a big believer in manuscript evidence. And it would seem that based on the manuscript evidence that these were written in Greek. But there's little things like this that make me go, hmm, why do you have to point out the Greek word if it was written in Greek? For example, he says, we have found his own brother, Simeon. And he said, we have found the Messiah. Which means Christ. But Christ means Messiah. So it makes me think, are we, do they have to point out the Greek word um, because it wasn't written in Greek? 
I don't know. Maybe. Is it even worth having a conversation about? I don't know. That just jumped out at me as I'm looking at this right now. And I'm also reminded of the passage in Revelation where it says, where it talks about Abaddon, but in Greek, his name is Apollyon. Well, you wouldn't need to tell us what his Greek name was if it was written in Greek because it would just say Apollyon. Anyway, I don't know. I'm just... It just came to my mind. Let's move on. Verse 42. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simeon, or Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip. And he saith unto him, Follow me. Now Philip was of Basidia, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael, and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there be any good thing that come out of Nazareth? And Philip said unto him, Come and see. I love that line. Come see for yourself. I can point out all the reasons why I believe this or that, but just just come, just come see for yourself. And maybe that's the right attitude. Uh, come see for yourself. Seek it out for yourself. Don't take my word for it. I could go through all the prophecies and I could look, pull up all the manuscript evidence and all the stuff that says why I believe what I believe about Jesus. But really, the only way a person is going to believe is if they come and see for themselves. Come and see, he says. Verse 47, Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, and he saith to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. And Nathanael saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. And Nathanael answered and saith, Unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Now, remember, this is our gospel portion for the week for a reason. And because we just covered our Torah yesterday, our Torah portion for the week yesterday, this should be jumping out to you, as it is to me. By the way, I didn't pre-read this this morning. I didn't have a chance. But, man, this is jumping out at me right now. So he says, okay, I, so you're going to... So Nathaniel's like, yeah, you're the son of God, the king of Israel. Nathaniel believes this just because Jesus happened to see him sitting underneath the tree even though Jesus wasn't necessarily present. And so Nathaniel's like, yeah, you're definitely who you say you are. And he's saying, you're going to see greater things than this, but here's the specific thing that you're going to see. You shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending. Now, before we finish, that sounds exactly like what happened to Jacob in our Torah portion yesterday. He puts his head under a rock and then he sees the angels and he sees a ladder. He sees an opening in heaven and he sees a ladder. And the angels of God ascending and descending on the ladder. And when you think about this image, the ladder from earth to this opening. So this ladder, it's this it's a pathway to heaven, right? You climb the ladder and it, and it leads, and you see you got angels and you got angels descending and ascending on this ladder, but Jesus basically just said, I am that ladder which leads to heaven. Because he says, You're gonna see greater things than this, Philip. Verily, verily, I say unto you, hereafter you shall see heaven opened, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. And that would have jumped out. That statement would have rung in the ears of the Hebrews listening to him say that. And they would have made that connection, I'm guessing. They would have made that connection back to Jacob. Well, there you have it, friends. I pray that you've been blessed this morning in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua. I pray that the words this morning have pierced your heart, even from a flawed man like myself, and uh, and have caused you to draw nearer to God. 
I just want to thank you for your support and uh, just ask for your prayers to be upon me and upon my family, that you would just pray for mercy and protection to be upon us, um, that you'd pr- pray for me to do this work in the way that God would have me to do it. And I ask that you would continue to support this work. You can do it through PayPal. Um, but becoming a Patreon subscriber on a monthly basis really helps out a lot as well. Uh, there's also snail mail is an option, so please consider doing that. I'm also working on a book project, a devotional project, and I could use your prayers for that, that I would that I would just put this thing together the right way, uh, that, that it would be a blessing uh, to, to the whole world. Thank you for all you've done, far more beyond what I deserve. That's all I've got for you guys. Have a blessed weekend. Peace and grace be with all of you. And until next time, God bless.